Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff Mixing Course. This course is 15 lessons long, and in these 15 lessons, you will learn to mix a whole track from start to end using only Ableton Live's own stock devices. What you will learn is a mixing workflow that works for any type of genre and any type of song, the key concepts of mixing, awesome techniques, and ways to apply the Ableton Live stock devices into your mix, as well as some fun tips and tricks. While watching this course, you can actually practice and do exactly what I'm doing in the videos using a song that I have created just for this course. You can download the stems and Ableton Live practice session from the link down below. No previous mixing experience needed. I will explain everything to you and you can get started with your mixing. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified every single time I post a new video for this course. Let's get started with mixing. Okay, so this episode is about reverb and applying reverb into your mix. And I really hope that this video will help you to understand reverb a little bit better. And also thank you so much from DistroKid for sponsoring this mixing course. <laughs> DistroKid is such a cool distribution company and they also have so many features to help independent musicians like me and you. And one of these things is called the splits. It's to do with the fact that you can easily, super easily split all the revenue with all the people you collaborated with. So in the end of this video, I'm showing you how that works and it's such a cool thing. So check that out. But now let's get into this video and learn about reverb in mixing. So everybody loves reverb, don't we? We all feel like we need to sink into it. And if we go to the return tracks, we already have one reverb there. And reverb, especially in Ableton Live, looks a bit confusing, but it's totally easy to understand. I have a whole tutorial about how it works. So please go down below and check that out if you find any of these controls confusing. And now we need to talk about the space. So in the first episode, in this whole course, we talked about this 3D space that we see in front of us. And we record songs live as a whole set. We already get the kind of the room sound, which can also be called the plead. <laughs> so you hear the room where it's recorded, uh, the echoes and the reverb of the room. Is it being recorded in a church? Is it recorded in a studio, in a pub, whatever? That's the sound of the reverb of the original reverb. So when we go to the mixing of the project, we need to evaluate what do we want to achieve as a room. Is the recording originally from one place? Do you want to take it to another space? So example, it's being recorded in a small studio room. Do you want it to sound like it was recorded in a church? Do you want to have it sounding like it's not in any type of space? That this room in front of you that you're watching actually looks like a universum, like it's all that the singer is in front of you on this stage and the keyboard player plays around somewhere <laughs> in the sky. Because it's digital, we can get completely crazy with it and we can just have fun with the sound of the room. And what I'm trying to say to with this is that we need to separate in our minds, are we using it as an effect or are we using it as a room sound? So example, if we're using as a room sound, which is usually what we're doing, do you want to have five different rooms in your song? So singer is in the shower, <laughs> drummer is in a church, uh, keyboard players flying around somewhere in the universe. Again, as I've been saying to you uh, throughout all the time, there's no right or wrong. Science is just right. Everything else is opinion. So there's no right or wrong way to use reverb, but have an intention of what you want to achieve with it. So I'm going to show you now a couple of different ways to use that. When we go here uh, to the reverb, you can see that there's different options for presets already. Is it effect or is it a room sound? Room sound, room sound, effect. <laughs> we could go to the vocals and we could make sure that all the vocals are in the same room. I will be talking about returns and sends a little bit more in detail in the uh, lesson 11. Uh, if you're not really sure on how returns and sends work, I have done a full walkthrough video explaining what they are. 
So if you already want to go and see how they work in technically, go and check that out so that it will make sense. But basically we have two channels here. The other one has reverb, the other one has already delay automatically always. What I can do is I can add reverb to all of the vocals that are inside of this group using the group track reverb control. So A stands for A, which is here in a return track A reverb. So it's the same one. So one more I open this up, the more we will hear reverb on the vocals. So let's just have a listen on the vocals. Okay, so now it sounds like the vocals are inside type of track. So if I want to use reverb as an uh, that they are all in the same room, then uh, maybe the people are standing in the different areas of the room. So the reverb is slightly different in every place. I could have that the main vocal has less, less reverb because the vocalist is much closer to us. So again, remember what we talked about the room, where, where are we locating everybody in the room? So I want the vocal main vocal to have drier sound because there's more direct sound. So direct sound means that the direct signal from here to the audience ears. So if we have less reverb, it indicates and creates an illusion that the main singer is closer to us. Where for the backing vocal, I could add a lot more reverb like this, which indicates that they are maybe further away somewhere that is really echoing and really like beautiful reverb like that. Maybe some of the like the vocal three, I want to have even more because I just want it to be this floaty sound somewhere in the space. So maybe the singer is even further away. I don't know. As I said, it doesn't necessarily need to be realistic if you don't want to. So let's listen to this one. Want to love you the way you love me tonight. So example, the backing one, love me tonight, is somewhere a little bit further. But now if we want to make sure that all of them are same room, I can do the same for the mids. I can make go and solo this group. And I can add them either separately here. So again, do I want some pads to be like a much further away? The strings, example, we added a lot of width to them with the utility. So they are really like wide. So maybe a reverb adds even more space to them. So we can do that or, or we can go to the group track and add here reverb to all of them. Which I wouldn't do for this track just because I feel like it, they all need to be listened separately. So example, the chords, I want to be a bit more drier. I want them to feel like they're closer. The strings, I want to be further away in the room. So in the drums, I do the same thing. On bass, I just want to add a just tiny bit, um, snare a little bit more, kick none, and hi-hat a little bit. And then on the low end, I'm just going to add a little bit overall room to all of them. Not that much, just a tiny bit. I want to add a reverb as an effect. What does it mean again? We have this pad sound here that we use the utility to, to widen it up. But what if we want to add even more to interest and like space to it? I want it to be more floaty. I want it to be somewhere in the space, somewhere far away. I'm going to take away that reverb so I'm not adding two reverbs to the same track. Uh, you can if you want to, but again, it's almost like conflict because then the signal is recorded in two places. So I'm going to go to the special and from here, I'm going to find a very interesting reverb that I can use almost like an effect. So singing can, let's listen how that sounds on it. So again, can you hear it sounds like it's much further away but also there, it added this kind of ghostly kind of singing thing because it added chorus to it. We can also add stereo here. So it even widens this, 
reverb away. So it sounds like it's all around us. It fills up the space. So now it might be that it's too much. Again, remember, as I've been saying from the beginning, what's aesthetic and what's mixing. So right now it's going in the borderline. It depends how much do you want to. Is it your track or is it for somebody else? So I might just take the chorus away a little bit or dry and wet. So it doesn't change it too much. So this is without. Sounds quite close. This is with. Somewhere there. Floating around in the space. So as I said, again, it separates because some of the other sounds are much closer so we can hear the dryness of them. But this one is really wet and it's really like far away. So we are pushing it away. Again, there's no right or wrong, but my tip for you is use one very good reverb that you love that really represents the space that you want to take all these tracks to. And as we said, in the beginning, mixing is all about separating things, but also making them sound good together. And reverb can really bring everything together as one to this one room that it just sounds like perfect together. Or we can use it as an effect to push things away or add something more interesting uh, aesthetic quality to the to the sound. So the next episode we're going to be talking about delays and chorus and flangers and other effects so come back to that. Woohoo! <laughs> Hey, hey, so I just want to tell you a little bit about DistroKid Split. It's not like you don't not learn to do splits, but it's a service where you can split all the revenue, um, all the percentage, all that with all the people that you're collaborating with. Because especially now, like 2020, 2021, we started to collaborate with people even more and more and more. Then sometimes it can be a bit messy because you're like, how do I actually get everything paid? You know, 50% for that person and 50% for me but how do I get that all sorted out well you go to your district account and on the top bar there there is splits so basically automatically splits payments to your collaborator super easy to do so you're gonna select the track which you collaborated with with somebody else so you go select that then you just go to next so example if I compose this with uh, 50 and 50 with somebody else so I can go here ah, where is 50 there we go and I can add another 50 for somebody else if I had written that this with anyone else so you can add unlimited collaborators to your track you can change the splits anytime so also it's really good for privacy and so that there's no drama uh, the collaborators can only see their own percentages what they're getting because otherwise drama in in a band your collaborators do need to have a DistroKid account, one of these lovely things, uh, but they get 50% off discount. So it's only like 10 bucks or something. So if your collaborator is late signing up, it doesn't mean that your release is going to be late. And also if they never sign up, then you can either keep the percentages for yourself or you can do it the calculations somewhere else. And also DistroKid never takes a cut. So remember that. So you get all your 100% of your money. It's just a really easy tool. Like as an independent artist, we don't have money to pay for accountants. We can actually just do it here. And that's why it's super fast way to do that. So I'm really love it. I love this. I love this. Love it, love it, love it. If you want to check out DistroKid and also splits, then go to the link down below and more info there. Check it out. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe. Please hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time I post. Usually I always post all my Patreon followers here, but in this mixing course, I am now thanking all my patrons in the info box down below. If you want to be part of that family, where I do weekly live stream Q and A's. I give feedback, I give free stuff, presets and templates. If you want to be part of that all and amazing community, then please check out the link also down below. Also remember I have merch, so check that out as well down below. Have a very lovely day and I'll see you next Sunday because I post every single Sunday. Bye.